Welcome to Kay's Tiny House Adventures where I, Kay, am building my very own tiny house. I have zero build experience, but I have lots of drive and very, very, very amazing friends. And that is that. So today I'm going to go over how we sheathe the walls with plywood, or in my case, OSB. I opted to get a half inch OSB board that has a radiant barrier on it because it is a small house that's going to have metal siding and a metal roof. So any sort of thing that could help repel heat is a good thing, especially living in Texas. We're using the sheathing on both the walls and the roof. And so when you install this stuff on the siding, they recommend shiny side out. And on the roof, they recommend shiny side down. And basically this made my house look like a Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, very shiny, very boxy, very a vibe. <laughs> but luckily it will be covered up very soon with house wrap. So that is very exciting. So we purchased a first round of sheathing, a little over 30 sheets, uh, when we were still about to frame the roof because the idea was that maybe we could add a little more strength to the structure before putting the roof on. But we did not do that, which makes sense now because first I had to put on hurricane straps to all the roof beams. So this is very similar to what I did before with the wall beams, but this time I had to be up super high and it was a lot of hammering and reaching over precariously and all that good stuff. I survived, <laughs> but it did take maybe three days of me going over to the site just working for like an hour over lunch or something and getting as much as I could done. And our strategy was to do the bottom corner of the side with the door first and make sure that was super straight and then work off from there. Some perfect eight feet. Uh-huh. And then that way the next sheet on this wall will bring it out the half inch to match that. Ah, to nice. That, right? Okay. Doug was in charge of cutting the plywood down to size and then Phil and I helped hold them up to the house. Um, Doug would start the nail gun and then Phil and I would finish either the nail gun or drawing the lines where the studs were so we knew where to nail. Not a lot could write on this shiny barrier except for this one blue permanent marker. So that blue permanent marker became like a lifeline for us. The first row was easy enough because we could easily reach it and then it was time for the second row. And so we put little nails into the studs to create a little spacer. The manufacturer recommends like an eighth of an inch space in between the layers. These plywood sheets are heavy and carrying them above your head is just ridiculous. And then can we hold it on the ladder? Uh, like right there? Like, right there. Right there. We needed to push in the wall for it to be square, so Phil had a great idea. You need to put your feet against the barn and then push with your full body weight. Powerlifting days. What? My powerlifting. 
hunting days. That's right. It's all, you know, paying off now. This is me a, doing my deadlift. I'm gonna put a few more nails. Alright, tell me when though. Eventually, it got too tall, and luckily, Doug has scaffolding parts, so he was able to put that together, and we had scaffolding that we could use to reach the higher up places. This is super safe. It was fun as each new piece was added. The inside of the house started just becoming more feeling like a house. Um, on the first day, I think it was like really cold. And so Debbie made us tea and we had like a little tea break. And so Phil and I were like pretending to drink tea in my living room. It was great. And then on another day, and maybe this was the same day, all the days are mixed up in my head. Tanya and Valerie came by cause they were taking a walk and decided to stop by. So they got to tour the place and see how it was coming along, which is really cool. And then they and Debbie went off to like drink and be merry while we were working, but we got to join them after our day ended. So that was nice. So it was a very good end of a very long day's hard work. We put the sheathing straight across all the windows, um, everything except for the door. So we still needed one way to get inside. So uh, something smart that Doug suggested was we put up the plywood or OSB against where we wanted to put it. And then Doug would trace out where to cut it, where the door frame was. So he knew where to cut it and we'd be fine. So that was super nifty. And then once we got to the tops of the walls where they started um, coming in, then we also did the same trick where we could get smaller pieces and kind of draw where those angles were so that Doug could just use like a skill saw and cut those by hand. So that was really nice as well. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So the hardest part of sheathing the walls was just making sure that things were as straight as possible. So it got a little tricky when, like where the gooseneck goes up. So we were aligning it to that one bottom corner where the front door is, and then we worked our way over, and then needed another layer, and then that layer we wanted to be pretty in line with where the gooseneck starts. And so there were just kind of little compromises we had to make along the way. It was definitely the attention to detail that I appreciate Doug and Phil for having, because I would have just slapped that sucker on and nailed it in and been like, it's fine. <laughs> but they had more integrity to the build, so I 100,000% thank them for that. Maybe one of the harder areas to put sheathing on was um, underneath the gooseneck. So it would be like the back wall underneath the gooseneck. And it was because the trailer for the gooseneck 
the metal was coming up. So what we did when we made the frame was we ensured we had made enough space to fit a piece of sheathing in between. And uh, it was very secure up in there. So there was a lot of finagling to get it through the trailer. And then, uh, you know, alignment wasn't perfect. So we had to kind of like take out a little bit of the plywood on the front side to make it all fit. And I think we did a pretty good job uh, considering how much effort and a lot of hammering it took. That was one funny thing was anytime we put a sheet up and then nailed it, that sucker was in. Like as much as like, oh, we could like hammer it down a bit. Nope, that thing was going nowhere. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was intense. I then had to go buy more sheathing because we needed to finish up the walls and have enough for the roof. We bought about 16 more sheets as well as house wrap. Doug in his barn of, I fear, it's like the Mary Poppins bag of barns. <laughs> he happened to have some roofing paper left over from whatever other project. So I was able to use that and I also had to buy a few more two by fours because after we put up the sheathing on the walls, we had to add the eave for the roof to go on top of. That was fun. <laughs> it was essentially on the front and back, it was just a two by four along the whole length. And then on the shorter size, it was an eave that came out about six inches. And the sides, the front and back sides were only just the two by four because of restrictions for when the trailer's on the road. So it can only be a certain width. <clears throat> and I was essentially useless. Like I drilled some pre-drill holes for them, but they had to align this E with the roof and there was a lot of angles that needed to be cut. So that extra six inches in the blueprint, it was just a tiny little skinny block, like a two by four that was um, say like three inches. And so Doug was like, instead of just doing that small two by four, let's create like a bulkier thing so we can use nails and hopefully it won't split the pieces in two. So I created six inch blocks to go in between the two pieces. Doug tried the framing nail gun and it immediately split into two. So then we realized we had to screw these pieces together and it was just a lot of, a lot of coordinating and screwing things in and me playing with the dogs while Doug and Phil figured it out. <laughs> Cause too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, Oops, sorry, I poked your deal up. <laughs> Fun story, there is a, a portrait I had made. I go to a big brother, big sister charity ball every year with some friends. Uh, our friend Nicholas is very involved. He's a big himself and he's um, on the board of this charity. So we, it's just been a thing. Like every year we get, it's an excuse to get dressed up drink, eat good food, dance the night away. It's again, lots of fun. 
And over the years, I have participated in the auctions to the best of my ability. Uh, back in the day, I won a trip to Bali. It was like for 10 of us to go to Bali. And so we did that and that was exciting. Other years, I've gotten like silent auction packages with various things that I like or I'm interested in. And so this, or last year, <laughs> Uh, I won a, <laughs> I had a few drinks <laughs> and there was a silent auction for a, like a portrait that you could get done. And it was like a photograph portrait. And the example piece was this beautiful blonde family with blue eyed blonde kids. It was very cute. But I was like, wouldn't it be funny if me and Taco <laughs> showed up and got a portrait made? <laughs> so I bid on it, fully thinking I was gonna get outbid. I did not, I won, I, I won. <laughs> and this lady was super nice, loved Taco, very supportive of the vision I had. And we did the portraits. And then I think it, it's a 16 by 20 portrait. And as we're building the walls of this tiny house, I'm thinking, where am I gonna put this portrait? There's like no way, this portrait's not gonna fit. It's small, but it's big for a tiny house. And so I tell her, I'm like, oh my gosh, can we like get it any smaller? I don't know what to do. And she was like, it's already in production. I will hand deliver it to you and we will figure this out. So months pass, uh, she reaches out and she's like, it's done, it's ready. Uh, so I invite her to the build, the tiny house build site, and she brings the painting. <laughs> and it is, objectively, it is very cute. Me and Taco look adorbs. Uh, will I want it hanging up in my tiny house? That is the question. I think my parents <laughs> may take over. <laughs> Uh, I think I may gift it to my mom. She's like, can I have a copy? And I was like, you can have the real thing. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah. But again, lovely work. Would recommend if that is your thing and you want a portrait of your family or just you or you with your dog, whatever. Um, Love the experience, glad it happened, grateful for it. <laughs> ah, I just can't get over it. So anyways, thank you so much for following along. Please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates and notifications as I make new videos. And until next time, bye.